Ireland was a country of 32 counties. We're not going to go back into the history of it. But it was partitioned against the wishes of all the Irish people. And we in this part of Ireland here, the Irish who live in this part of Ireland, never owed their allegiance to Britain or anywhere else. They owed their allegiance to Ireland all the time. And then the army moved in. They decided a kind of a mini internment. They would, they would block all the border roads and wouldn't let us cross the border, you see. So the people had to rebel. laying in the street doing press-ups take their shoes off take it to the barrack I myself was taken to the barrack take it off all your clothes kept there for four hours stripped degraded you can do it like but there, nobody seemed to care I think when uh, for instance an artificial border intrudes on your life from a very early stage it's, it's quite easy to, to, to move into being active in politics then as opposed to just being interesting and from, from reading the paper, etc., etc. We would never, never, never have trouble here if the British Army left. And all that they stand for. Why are they still here? Well, you might be asking me that question. You might ask the British government that question. You've got to remember that every member of the good British government are probably unionists at heart. They don't want the Irish to have their freedom. You must differentiate here that in the North there are two types of people, the Irish and the British. But to put a name on them, the British government doesn't call them British because that wouldn't be nice, so they call them Unionists. They label them as Unionists and they label us as Nationalists. And they would say, well, this is a war between the unions and the nationalists. This is a war between Protestants and Catholics, and we're here to keep them from fighting. Then it comes to place to cross Madeleine, where there are no Protestants, there are no anything, all one-way traffic. Anti-army, completely and utterly anti-army, and anti-British. And then they label us and say, oh, they're all bandits up there. We're very flattered, you know. I, I, the people around here wouldn't want the British government to say, well, they're all nice people in Cross Midland. We see as much of them as ever before, perhaps more sometimes, the same in helicopter flights. They have seized property here uh, over the years, they still have, they haven't returned any of it. But this is all, you know, conveniently ignored by people when they talk about peace now reigns in the six counties. They say the troops have left the streets. They ignore the fact they haven't left the streets everywhere. In particular, the, the place where they had the least reason to be in the first place to have it left. Because as you said, there is no, even the remotest possibility of any kind of uh, inter-community trouble here or sectarian violence, if you like. Uh, it isn't even possible here because the, <laughs> the, the difference doesn't exist here. So why are they here except to fly the bloody British flag? There'll never be really peace in Ireland under the people of this island have control of their own destinies. And do you believe that can happen and people can live harmoniously? Sure they can. Why wouldn't they? So this is, the, the, if you like, the last outpost of the empire, which I personally believe Britain still has some vestige of clinging to. I am not one who, who, who follows the line that Britain wants to leave. I don't believe that. We kept the struggle up and they couldn't succeed. We can't drive them out, naturally enough. We're not fit. We're only a small village. But we, we, we wouldn't let them walk on us. We wouldn't let them tear our pride away. That is the story of Cross Midland. <laughs> 